So let's talk a little bit about uh, coordinate systems or fixtures or work offsets. Uh, first, to set the stage, from time to time I do uh, a couple videos like this, uh, like I call them dev notes, uh, and the point is not to, you know, produce a video for the ages, something for the Broadcasting Hall of Fame, but just to get the discussion going about some feature or some part of uh, the workflow uh, to make sure that uh, we're developing things in the right way. And I, I want to talk about uh, fixtures and, and work offsets because the, most of the hobbyists out there don't use them very much, but they can really be the bread and butter for uh, a shop that's doing uh, more high volume production. And there's a number of different ways, and, and, and I, I may not even be understanding this stuff right myself. Uh, I, I come at this from the hobby side as well. So if, you know, I, I really am looking for feedback on how you guys use uh, fixtures and work offsets if you use them and what you'd like to see in the workflow for uh, for path <clears throat> so as I understand it there's there's really uh, there's there's well back up uh, let's talk about what they are first of all if you're a hobbyist you may not even be familiar with them uh, your machine has its own coordinate system uh, the absolute coordinates of the machine and in G code that's usually called the G53 coordinate system uh, if you switch to the G53 coordinate system you're jogging or moving in the absolute coordinates of the machine uh, but you normally don't work in G53. The default, uh, certainly for Linux CNC and for most other controllers, is G54. So you will home the machine to establish the G53 coordinate system, and then you'll touch off your part in G54, and all of your G code moves are relative to that coordinate system. So you tell it where 00, zero is, and everything is relative to that. Um, but you could have other coordinate systems as well, uh, G55, uh, 56, all the way up to 59, and then it goes 59.1 up to, I don't know, 59.9. Uh, so you could have a lot of different coordinate systems, and just by issuing a single G code, G55, you've switched the coordinate system. So you can, within your program, you can switch back and forth. And this can be useful, especially if you want to do something like multiple copies of the same part. So in, rather than set up the job, uh, you know, to have multiple copies of our solid in FreeCAD and then set up a job that references multiple copies, we just have one and then we have uh, in the G code, we tell it to run the same program in multiple coordinate systems. Uh, that's one possibility, and that's really kind of the, the bread and butter for fixtures in a shop uh, where you're really using, you know, you, you want to set up the machine to run uh, the, the same part over and over again in a number of different places. Maybe the, the bed of the machine has room to run six parts at a time. Uh, another possibility, um, and, and I can really see three ways that this could be used in FreeCAD. The first is the one I just talked about. The second is kind of a nice to have, but it's more of a, I don't think it's a very common uh, use case. And that is, uh, imagine that you have a, a part that needs to be worked on in two different orientations. So you would set up a job in your document for the first orientation and set up the operations that go with it and then set up a second job for another orientation and the operations that go with it. But now imagine that you have, a, you have two fixtures on the milling table and you wanna, you wanna put a piece of stock in the first fixture and do the first job. Then you wanna take it out of that fixture, put it into the second fixture and do the second job. And maybe you want to you know, be running parts kind of through as a pipeline. So I've got a part in fixture in the first fixture and a, a half completed part in the second fixture and when I run it it does both jobs stops and then I move the from the first fixture to the second fixture second one comes out and I run again uh, that I could see as a, as a very useful workflow to run a lot of parts through quickly but it's probably not terribly common the third one that I think would really be killer, but I don't think that we can do it yet, is where um, you know I've got a, a document that has one job in it, and I have a different FreeCAD document that has a different job in it. And what I would like to do is have sort of a super job that I 
could um, refer to those other two documents and, and build a single out, G code output file that runs um, you know, one part in one coordinate system and another part in another coordinate system. That way I could have, say, a, a, an entire collection of parts that fit into standard fixtures. And depending on what my material availability is or what I need right now, I could quickly build one job that, say, runs oh, two or three parts in, or runs one part in one fixture and another part in another fixture, and I can set it up and the machine runs and goes. That, I think, is going to require a different, you know, maybe, maybe we can get to that when we have something like, uh, like assemblies, uh, you know, documents that refer to other documents. But I don't see how we can do that right now. I think it would require the user to actually change their existing document, and that seems kind of clunky to me. So, um, the, uh, the next thing is, what, what does it mean when you, uh, if you're going to run parts in, let, let's go back to the first use case, where I'm just going to run copies of the same job in two different fixtures, um, or two different coordinate systems. Um, well, there's a couple different ways that that could be processed. Uh, the first is that the, uh, imagine that we have, uh, the job has uh, two tools and um, and three or four different operations. So I could do the tool change to the first tool, do the operation in the first fixture, change to the second tool, do the operation in the first fixture. And so basically do everything for the first fixture, then go through the process again in the second fixture, including all of the tool changes. And that, that's very easy to do, um, especially from a programming point of view, it'd be very easy for us to do that. Uh, but it'd be really inefficient, uh, especially if you don't have an automatic tool changer, because you're gonna be manually changing the tools more often than you need to. So the second possibility is that we change to the first tool, do all of the operations that can be done in the first fixture with that tool, switch to the second fixture, do all of the operations again in the second fixture, switch back to the first fixture, change tools, do the operations in the first fixture, and so forth, and cycle through that way. That minimizes the number of tool changes uh, and should speed up the, uh, the process that way. Uh, but that means that basically all of the fixtures will finish at the same time. So uh, in one case, you are, you know, you, you might be able to, if your bed is big enough where you can get to one fixture while the other one is cutting, you could, you know, run the first job and then it would switch over and start running the second fixture. And while it's running the second fixture, you could replace the material, the stock in the first fixture. And, and you know, as soon as it finishes, you just restart the job again. And, and that way you, you're keeping your machine running the whole time, uh, but you, uh, you, you have minimized tool changes. So, uh, and then the third possibility is that, you know, it, regardless of tool change, it does operation in first fixture, operation in second fixture, operation in first fixture, second fixture, alternating back and forth like that. Uh, and there, there may be some uh, uh, reasons that you'd want to run the, uh, uh, order the operations that way. So I've built a uh, kind of a proof of concept uh, and I'll put up a pull request uh, to show this and uh, uh, and I'd really like you know people to try it out and tell me uh, whether we're going in the right direction here. Um, so I've got a job set up uh, and, a, and a part with a just it's got uh, two tools and two operations. And if I click into the job uh, and switch to the output tab, uh, you'll see a couple of new controls here. And uh, uh, it, I've got a, a list of coordinate systems here. And by default, when you create a new job, G54 will be selected. And, um, and then the choice to order by will be uh, selected as well. And it will order by, I believe the default in this case is to order by fixture. That means it's going to do all of the operations in the first fixture and then switch and do all of the operations in the second fixture. 
and uh, uh, and this will the, the default configuration is equivalent to the way that things work right now. You wouldn't see any output at all or any change to the output at all. So I've got a special uh, post processor that I, I wrote to, for debugging this and uh, what this does is it just suppresses all of the actual G code output and uh, um, so I can just see the it just writes the comment for the top of the operation so I can see that the ordering without being seeing all the the uh, detail underneath it. Uh, so if I select the job and post process it, um, you'll see that uh, what I did was it switched to the first fixture and then uh, switched to the first tool, did the contour operation, then the switch to the drill and did the drilling operation. Now if I change back to my job output and I'm going to add a second coordinate system and now I'm going to post process this same thing again and reload the output now you'll see same thing again the the fixture the first tool first operation second tool second operation then switch fixtures first tool, first operation, second tool, second operation. Now, switching back in here and we'll switch and we'll, this time we'll order by tool and post process it and reload. Okay, now um, you'll see we switch to the first tool, then we switch to the first fixture, first operation, switch to the second fixture, first operation, switch to the second tool, switch to the first fixture, second operation, second fixture, second operation. So this time it's, it's keeping, it's only doing the tool change uh, one time and uh, switching between operations and it wouldn't matter how many coordinate systems I picked. And then just to be complete we'll look at the uh, at ordering by operation and then be and then post processing this and uh, reloading our output you can see that uh, it switches to the first fixture, first tool, does the contour, switches fixtures, does the contour in the other one, switches back to the first one, switches tools, etc. Uh, and, and with this particular set of operations and tools, uh, uh, ordering by operation and ordering by um, fixture is, is almost identical. Uh, but if you were reusing tools between operations, uh, it, then it would look different in, in one case versus the other. So one other feature that is in here um, that I want to show you is uh, on the output tab there's this option for split output and if you turn that on what it's going to do is it's going to use the same ordering by that we have selected uh, but it's going to put the output into multiple individual files so if you wanted to uh, have multiple operations like in this case where I've got um, you know my contouring and my drilling is two operations you know I, I may not want to have uh, the machine run through all of that in one go I might want to have it do the contouring and then stop and I can inspect the part and uh, do any cleanup that I need to do and then load the drilling uh, output file, the, the drilling g-code file and run that as a separate step and uh, so if you do split output it will uh, it will do that and I'm gonna uh, do the post process on it now and you'll see that it substituted into my the name of the, my output file uh, it, it, it appended an underscore one so we're outputting the first part of the file and it, it'll still prompt to overwrite it if it needs to. And then it's popping up and it's now trying to output the second segment or the second part, second G-code file 
same thing it's going to ask to overwrite if it needs to and if I open these files bear with me okay so here we uh, put the fixture change the first tool did the contour change to the fixture and did the contour and in this case uh, so it's it's one um, you know we're, we're doing everything in both fixtures with one uh, tool change uh, no I was ordering by operation so uh, um, so that that was correct it was a uh, uh, doing the contour in the first fixture and then in the second fixture and then uh, and then uh, finishing and then the second output file will contain a switch to the first fixture the tool change the drilling switch to the fixture and the drilling in the second fixture so that just uh, uh, should make it a little bit easier to uh, manage your output if you uh, if you want to keep things into separate files like that. Okay, that's a little bit about uh, coordinate systems and fixtures. Like I said, I'm really looking for uh, uh, information on whether you guys use these things right now and how you use them. And if there's anything else you'd like to see implemented in the workflow, uh, around them and make them a little bit easier. Uh, work coordinate systems are not for the faint of heart. Uh, it's very easy to crash your machine, particularly when moving between fixtures if there are at different Z levels. Um, so in, in the way that I've, I've set this up right now is anytime there's a fixture change, uh, it will insert a retract back to the uh, job clearance level uh, before it does any other movement. Um, and, and one other note on this is that when it outputs the, uh, it, it builds the list of objects to be output and sends that to the post processor. Uh, the ideal thing would be for it to, for the post processor to, you know, it's, if it's doing the same thing in multiple fixtures, to write that into a sub program and then call the sub program for each of the fixtures that it needs to. Uh, but it, th this does not do that. It, it's actually duplicating all of the uh, G code. So if you had a million line G code and you're running it in two fixtures, your file is going to be two million lines long. And uh, I did that purposefully because the uh, uh, a lot of the post processors that are out there the, particularly the the hobby class ones like uh, uh, GRBL or, or smoothie they they're taking their G code um, you know streamed to them dribbled to them uh, and so the, the controllers don't have a complete picture of the uh, the entire G code program at any point in time so it isn't they don't usually support uh, sub programs or subroutines so so, uh, so that, that's the, the design call to do that. It would probably be possible to modify it. Um, and, you know, right now what was implemented here doesn't require any changes to the post processor to work. But if we wanted the post processor to put out more efficient G code and use sub programs, then that's going to take a lot of work upstream as well. So uh, another thing, you know, please, th this is a dialogue, this is a two-way thing. Uh, make comments down below or make your own video and explain how I got this thing wrong uh, and where we go next. Um, all right, that's it. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, bye.